So since sports are for the most part coming back and people are starting to play again, I figured I'd take this opportunity to share some tips and tricks about breaking in new football boots. And I'm not even sure that breaking in boots is the right terminology to use. I really feel like it more comes down to getting used to your boots regardless of whether or not they're new. And this is something that a lot of people don't necessarily realize. Even if you have a pair of boots that you've been wearing for a year now, but you didn't wear them for a two or three month period, once you start wearing them again, there is a break in process or at least a period of time where you have to get used to the boots all over again. So in the name of comfort and avoiding blisters, here are five tips and tricks that will help you get used to your football boots in the most effective and efficient way possible. If you guys end up enjoying this video and find these tips helpful, don't forget to support it with a like, it goes a long way. And if you are new here watching for the first time and don't wanna miss out on weekly videos on everything football boots, be sure to subscribe. So regardless of whether you went to the store or ordered your boots online, right now you probably ordered them, they arrive at your house and you're probably very excited to give them a go, but that's not what you should do. The very first thing you should do is actually wear them around the house. Now I'm not saying that you should put your boots on and sprint around the house destroying the floors. That's a very bad idea, but what I am saying is it's not really a big deal to put your boots on as you normally would and just live inside your house, play video games, watch TV, walk to the kitchen to get something to eat, go to the bathroom, just do your daily life. The only difference is that you have your new football boots on your feet. What you have to realize about all football boots is not every pair is going to fit or feel perfect on your feet. So when you wear them around the house for a couple of hours, it's gonna give you a really good idea of how those boots fit and how they feel, whether or not they're comfortable for you specifically. And you might run into a situation where you realize, hey, these boots aren't as comfortable or don't fit me quite the way that I was hoping, at which point, because you've only worn them around your house in kind of a try-on type situation as you would in a store, but obviously for an extended period of time, the boots are still in brand new condition. So if they're not the right ones for you, you still have the opportunity to return and or exchange them, where if you get brand new boots and immediately go to the field and start kicking some balls around, after an hour you realize the boots aren't really the ones for you, but because they're used, you can no longer return them. Now, if you search anything about this topic on the internet, you're going to come across the hot water trick, which is something that I've talked about on this channel a few times in the past. And for the most part, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing it, especially to modern day football boots. Once upon a time, football boots, especially in the early years of synthetic football boots, those synthetics were very plasticky. They were layered materials, extremely rigid, and it just took some time for those materials to loosen up. So the trick that a lot of people would do, pros included, is they would submerge the boots in hot water. Why hot water? Well, because of the heat. The heat would basically soften up all of the materials, basically before having actually worn the boots. So when you put them on your feet, they're already a little bit softer to begin with, which makes the break-in slash getting used to process a lot easier, or at the very least, more comfortable or less uncomfortable. You get what I mean. Fast forward to 2020, and honestly, most of the football boots that have come out in the last five years, in the age of knitted uppers especially, pretty much all of these football boots have a single layer of material for the upper, which means that it's automatically gonna be more flexible from the get-go, and because they're all textile based, which is basically like a sock-like material, you don't really feel stiffness in socks, you're not gonna feel a ton of stiffness in a lot of these football boots. So while you can use the hot water trick on any modern football boot, it's not really going to put you at any kind of advantage as far as breaking in the boots more quickly is concerned. Will they be softer after dipping them in hot water? Sure, but would you get the exact same softness just from wearing the boots for 10 minutes? Yes. The big misconception with the hot water trick is it's actually going to make the boots fit you better in the long run because you've softened the material, allowing it to mold to your foot more effectively. That's not actually true. If you don't use the hot water trick simply from wearing the boots, heat coming off of your body, because unless you are a reptile, you are a warm blooded human being, the same thing is going to happen while you're actually wearing the boots and much more quickly than it once did because football boots are so much softer than they used to be. This next trick is super simple and I see so many people get this wrong. Don't tie your football boots too tight when they're brand new. But Jim, I have laceless boots. I don't have to worry about this.
Now, how tight your football boots are is very much a personal preference thing, and every football boot's gonna be a little bit different based on shape, based on materials, based on the lacing system. There's a lot of variation to every single boot. When you have a well-broken in pair that you can tie really tight and still be really comfortable, the reason why you can tie them that tight is because your feet are used to the way that they wrap your foot in every single spot. When you get a brand new pair and you want them to be equally as tight, you might not be able to do that at first because when you tie them really tight, it's now a new boot, it's now new materials, it's a new shape. There is pressure in different spots of your foot that your feet are not used to. So what I would strongly recommend to basically avoid foot cramping and even potential blistering is that the first couple of times that you wear them, you don't necessarily tie them as tight as they can possibly go because that's gonna result in discomfort. The cool thing about the human body is its ability to adapt. However, that adaptation takes a little bit of time. I think a great example would be that one chair in your house that you always sit in that you find extremely comfortable. If you replace that chair for a new one, it might still be comfortable but it'll also feel a little bit weird because you're so used to sitting in that old chair the same thing goes with a brand new pair of football boots even if you put them on and they feel really comfortable if you tie them as tight as possible that's potentially going to lead to foot cramping and discomfort especially if you have a lower arch type on your foot and this is something that a lot of people get wrong where they get these brand new boots they tie them really tight and they're having these horrible discomfort and cramping issues and they think that they have the wrong boots when they don't the boots fit properly properly, they're just being tied way too tight. Now this is arguably the most important tip that I'll share in this video and it's in regards to socks. When you're playing in brand new boots especially, again, your body has to get used to the way that it feels, not only from a comfort perspective but also the skin. All of these contact points, potentially in areas that aren't used to being in contact with something, are going to be very sensitive when you play in brand new football boots. That's why you often get blisters when breaking in brand new boots because there's friction in spots that aren't used to being under friction that little bit of rubbing so having a good pair of socks that fit you good you don't want them to be too loose where there's a lot of extra material you don't want them to be rough so have a relatively fresh pair of socks they don't necessarily need to be brand new but they should be somewhat soft if you are a double sock a guy wear double socks some people like to do that when breaking in new boots but it's not entirely necessary if you want to do the grip sock thing if you find that more comfortable do that as well but i think the most important point here along with everything i just talked about is make sure that you're not wearing low cut socks you don't want any bare skin being exposed against any part of that brand new boot because i can almost guarantee unless you just have this like really hard, super durable skin, that any piece of skin that's left exposed against a brand new pair in that exact spot is where you're gonna end up with a blister. You can wear full length knee high socks, you can wear crew socks, you can even wear those low cut socks that are cut right at the ankle, but the no show ankle socks are something that I would strongly not recommend wearing with football boots. Not only do they not cover certain parts of your ankle as well as the back of your heel, because they are so low cut and because football boots fit really tight compared to other more, I guess, casual wear footwear, which is what no-show socks are more or less designed for, you're gonna find that they move around on you, exposing even more skin. And that is typically a big reason why a lot of people end up with blisters on their heel when wearing brand new boots is because they've left their skin completely exposed. And I don't care how soft the heel liner is inside of your boots, friction in a spot like that where there's lots of heat, there's lots of moisture, you're going to end up with some excessive rubbing which will in turn result in discomfort. So just make sure that all parts of your skin that are in contact with this boot are covered up by some decent socks. And the final tip that I have for you is not actually equipment related at all. It's based on you. And that is that the very first time or the very first couple of times that you wear your boots, depending on how they feel, you need to take it easy. If you're watching this video, I'm gonna guess that you've probably worn brand new boots straight into a match before. I know that I have several different times. And in certain instances, I've had no problems. It was perfectly fine, just kind of lucked out with how the boots fit and felt on my feet. But there have been other instances where there was discomfort the whole time. And I even ended up with blisters by the end of the match, but I was so stubborn and just wanted to wear those new boots so bad, it didn't really matter. The end result is blisters that would be super annoying for the next month 
just dealing with that is always the worst thing in the world, but it's something that's totally avoidable with new boots as long as you have a little bit of patience. So once you've worn your boots around the house for a day or a couple hours, as long as you need to decide that they're the right boots for you, you can now begin going about breaking them in or getting used to the way that they feel. And what I would strongly recommend and what I still do to this day with a brand new pair of boots is I go to the field or I go in my backyard with a ball and just do a little bit of juggling. I think this is a great way to get used to how the boots are going to feel on your feet with a little bit of low intensity movement. And it's also allowing you to feel the boots in regards to touch on the ball, which is obviously a big part of football boots as well, aside from fit and comfort. As you get more and more comfortable doing that and you're not feeling any kind of pains, that's when you can move on to doing a little bit of light jogging, maybe some passing. Again, just upping the intensity ever so slightly. And then once that feels comfortable and you're confident the boots aren't going to cause you any kind of blisters or something like that, you can move on to sprinting and shooting. But again, the first session that you wear them, I would say you want to keep it to a lower intensity. Think of it almost like a warm up. You wouldn't just jump straight into a mat without warming up a little bit, just as you wouldn't wear brand new boots at full intensity without warming up a little bit. Anyways, guys, those are my five tips and tricks on how to get used to new football boots in the most efficient way possible. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. If you guys are interested in some new boots for some really good deals, I'm going to leave a link down below in the description and a pop-up on screen to the deals of the week page on my website where all of the best sales currently available will be linked all on one page. So be sure to go ahead and check that out. If you aren't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. If you have any questions regarding what I talked about in this video, feel free to ask that down below in the comment section. Also down below is all of my social media information. And other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.